Hello everyone, welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we are starting on the Kerbal Space Program Launch Program Center. That's the one. Kerbal Space Center Runway. Runway. Launch pad. Well, cannot speak. Um, and uh, we have a Saturn V right ahead of us and we are going to be trying to see how far we can take it. Um, we are not going to be going to the Mon with it. That is fake news and that, you know, Saturn V's in this game can go way, 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 way further than the Mon. Uh, because the scale just isn't quite right. So, just uh, doing our launch now, this thing just barely crawls off the pad. But uh, if we go ahead and time lapse it, it'll look like it's going a bit quicker. So, with the Saturn V, it has an extremely low thrust to weight ratio, at least in Kerbal in real life, it does too, but it's even lower in Kerbal. And basically, we're going to have to do a really steep ascent profile, especially in the second stage, because it has even worse TWR. So it, you know, we have to plot fly very steep, which is a little inefficient, but hey, what can you do? So uh, we are going to be taking our Saturn V to where are we going today? Where, 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 where's the, it's a Val. We're going to Val. There goes that first stage, and I'm just parting up the second stage so you can see how steeply we're going. Um, yeah. Those um, five skiff engines, they are very low power, but they're they're fairly efficient. They're the, uh, yeah, the skiffs, they represent the J2 engine in real life. I'm going to just go ahead and uh, start to pitch over a little bit more as we start to uh, get that time to wrap wraps up a little bit and get some more horizontal speed. So yeah, we're going to Val. Uh, I figured it'd be cool to go to Val, uh, just because I think it's probably the, the furthest realistic destination you can bring the Saturn V to. And uh, I thought we could let uh, Val go to Val and plant a flag on Val. Which is a little kind of weird because Val is uh, named after the first female um, who ever went into space and uh, Russian, Russian person, Valentina, right? And we're taking an inferior American craft to Val. But oh well, that's what happens. Soviets didn't make it to the moon, did they? Nope. Okay, so just finishing up our burn now. Uh, we uh, did finish the burn and uh, our periaps and apoaps. There's about a 72 by 72 kilometer orbit, so we're just going to go ahead and do some orbit raising maneuvers at our apoaps and our periaps. Now, in real life, the Saturn V takes all of the first stage, all of the second stage, and about half of the third stage to get into orbit. And uh, in our, our case, this Saturn V took all of the first stage and like half of the second stage, a little more than half. But so as you can see, we have way more delta V relative to what state, you know, how much fuel we have than the real Saturn V did. So basically, we can go far with it. Now, we're just planning our maneuver node out to Joule right now, and then we can get ready to do our burn. About 1900 meters a second burn out to Joule, and um, I do want to say one thing is I did not build the Saturn V. This is a friend of mine who built it. Um, I do have my own Saturn V, but it is... Uh, it's just kind of buried away in some save file that I don't remember where I put it. And uh, so I just decided to use it. So you guys can let me know what you think of it. Uh, if you did a good job representing, recreating the Saturn V. There are a few issues that I would like to proactively point out so you all can shame him. Um, forgot RCS on the command module. That's a problem. And forgot any sort of power generation. Like so there, there's literally no, no power generation on this craft. So that's a bit of a noof, isn't it? Anywho, so uh, we did stage away that second stage, used uh, start and use third stage now, and now we're just going to go ahead and uh, plan our correction burn. Now, this craft does not have enough delta V to just go straight to Jewel, circularize around Val, and then do the reverse. So we're going to have to do a gravity assist off of Tylo. Now, uh, this is a little bit more complicated. I shouldn't say comp. Once you get the hang of it, if, if, you know, I talked about this the last time we went to the Jewel system when we visited the Kraken on Bop. But yeah, it just takes a little, a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Tylo to slingshot us around into a capture, basically. So we don't have to do it's, it's that, this maneuver saves us about three, four, five, maybe hundred meters a second of delta v. So as you can see, it it uh, it, it, me, it basically captured us for captured our orbit for us. So we're captured at Jewel, so we don't have to do any sort of Jewel periaps burn, which is nice. As you can see, it's, it's still a fairly elliptical orbit. It's nowhere near Val height. So we're going to have to manually lower our periaps. Or apoaps, actually. You don't lower your periaps. You would be crashing if I lowered my periaps, crashing the jewel. Um, basically, 
Um, we could have done, we could have waited for Tyler to come around another time and done another assist, which would lower our orbit again and again and again, but that is boring. I wanted to get there, and that'd be just annoying to have to, it'd take a very long time. Kerbals want to get home, even though, spoiler alert, this mission winds up taking way longer than I wanted it to. Uh, in terms of Kerbal time, not in terms of filming time. This video was one of the smoothest videos to film. Everything went well. I was, I was very happy. Because it's such a relief after uh, the last three videos, which are just an absolute disaster to film. But these are a lot better, so that's good news. So uh, we're just fine-tuning our uh, maneuver node and just having a look at our capture burn around Val. So what I'm going to do is going to do the capture burn or the capture assist, gravity assist, and then it's going to be about, I think, 500 meters a second to lower our apoaps to Val height, and then it's going to be about 1,500 meters a second to circularize around Val. Um, that's more than enough delta V, then, then, uh, then we have, no, that's not how that works. That is less delta V than we have, so we have, we have more than enough delta V to do that. As you can see, I'm just planning the maneuver node there, maybe a little more than 500. Uh, so, just gonna go ahead and time warp ourselves down to a Tylo height, and we can do the gravity assist around Tylo. So we can see Jewel over there. We can go ahead and slingshot ourselves around Jewel, and there's Tylo. We can sling past Tylo now, and then we can go ahead and lower the periaps. Apoap. Why do I keep saying periaps? Either way, lower that down to the height of Val. Then we can get ready to do our circularization burn. Um, at this, yeah, so basically we're just going to circularize around Val next after we lower our BAP WAPs. Said it right that time. So uh, while that happens, I do want to talk about um, the poll that I made in the last video in which uh, I pinned a comment and we talked, I asked you guys what video series you guys would like to see next. And so far as of recording this, um, we have five, six responses and the options were Minimus Base, Artemis Recreation, and Tylo Base. And right now Artemis is winning, but it's only by one vote, and there's not very many votes. So I'm gonna give it a few more days, see if there's more votes that show up. Uh, if not, if it's only one or one vote difference, I think I'll 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 just kinda choose. Um So just keep that in mind. Expect that series to start coming out in maybe a few days, week maybe a little less, just depending on what videos I have time to make and what videos I want to make. So that's that. Um, if you're at all interested in that, which you probably aren't, uh, yeah. And also one thing I do want to clarify is this video that I'm making right now is... The, the, the issue with making this video is basically Matt Lown has already made a video called Taking a Saturn V to Tylo, and I'm like, huh. Well, that's interesting. So, I want to articulate this point. This is a stock Saturn V. Like, this is exactly how they, more or less, exactly how the Saturn V worked in Apollo. Like, this is a recreation of the Apollo Saturn V. Matt Lowndes' video is a modified Saturn V. He adds a nuclear stage and a heavily modified lander. So, this this video is how far you can take a stock Saturn V. You can take a modified Saturn V much further as he as he showed, but this is a stock Saturn V. Just want to clarify that guys, just so it's not like, oh, well, what is this? We just made a worse version of Matt? No, I made a different version. I'm not saying he did anything wrong, but different version. Different version. That's why I didn't title this video, Taking a Saturn V to Val, because then, you know, it kind of just seems like I did a worse version of Matt, but um, no, that's just how this works. So that's what we're doing. We're going to Val uh, with a stock Saturn V. You can see the lander down there as we staged away the fairing like five minutes ago. And going ahead and do our circularization burn. One thing I do want to critique about my friend's build is the service module. I would have changed it to those ESA colors. Uh, just so, you know, it looks a little weird at the stripe and that's not really how it works. I would have, I would have done it a little bit differently, but to each his own, huh? And ours can go ahead and do the uh, reconfiguration. I think you're supposed to do that uh, when you're finding the third stage, and I just forgot to do it, so we're doing it now, around Val Orbit. Let's go ahead and fire up that, uh, whatever it's called, Wolfhound Engine, which is one of my favorite engines in the game. Uh, it's 
it, it alone basically makes the making history worth it. Maybe not, but eh. So uh, now what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lower, uh, actually yeah, we already did that, and now we're gonna go ahead and do, yeah, no, we are lowering our orbit now. See, I ignore what I'm doing, not. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna take the whole thing and then lower the orbit a little bit more. I figure there's not a huge amount of margin on the lander because this thing was, of course, for the month, uh, and Vala's uh, decently, it takes more than 100, maybe 200 meters a second more to land on. So that is, uh, that is interesting. Go on ahead now and detach the lander. We're going to take a uh, Val and a Bill, I would believe, down to the surface, and Jeb is going to fly the craft in orbit around Val. Uh, normally, I, <laughs> it's spinning out of control. It's because it has no reaction wheels. It's just going to spin, spin, spin. Uh, normally, uh, I like to bring Jeb down, uh, but you know, this is named after Val, the planet, so I, th I think Val deserves a trip. Uh, now we're just doing our landing burn. I started a little bit early, so we're just throttling down now, but, you know, I didn't, you know, it was fine. We have enough delta V. It's not like we're operating on, like, five mar five meters a second of margin. We have more than that. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up that burn now. We'll deploy the landing legs in a second. Uh, normally in uh, real in Apollo, they would deploy those the landing legs before they even start the deorbit burn. It just... What you do is you have the person in the command module visually verify that the landing legs are out before they even attempt to do a landing. Uh, but I like deploying them at the last second because it's cool. So now we've landed on Val. Not my best landing, but hey ho. And we're going to go ahead and do our surface activities. So we're going to get Val out. She's going to wander around, plant a flag. Let's see what pla flag. Blah, blah, flag. Oh, it's an American flag with not nearly enough uh, stars. Uh, that's interesting. Maybe this is a, I don't know. I really don't understand why it doesn't have enough stars. I just got that image from Google, and I probably should know how many flags the American flag has. I'm pretty sure it has uh, 12 is the correct number. Uh, as we all know, there are 12 states in America. So, I mean, we all know who they are, right? They're Texas, 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 and California. Those are all the, and New York exists. I don't know what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is there's a lot of irrelevant states in America. I don't know why I'm talking about irrelevant states in America right now. Delaware's kind of useless. <laughs> so, okay, now we're uh, just finished up our burn with the uh, bottom stage. We're, we're taken off, by the way. We're go redocking and heading back to Kerbin if you uh, weren't a boy because I was talking about significant states. Uh, so, uh, if you didn't know, the Apollo was a two-stage lander. So we just staged away the bottom stage. Normally the bottom stage is just for landing and then the top stage is just for takeoff, but I decided to, to just use up the entire delta V of the bottom stage just, just to make sure we had enough delta V to get back into orbit and dock with the station. Mothership, not a station. That'd be a pretty, pretty lame station if how you're gonna call that space station. So now we're just gonna be a drifting on up to Apple apps as we kind of spin in circles because of the lack of reaction wheels, but hey ho. And then we're going to go ahead and do our circularization burn and then do our rendezvous with the uh, mothership. One thing I did have to keep in mind is since the lander is controlled exclusively by RCS, uh, I have to, it doesn't have any reaction wheels, so I, have to, I really have to keep an eye on the RCS amount um, because if I run out, then, you know, we're just dead. We're just a dead piece of, a dead, a dead square floating around. And if, you know, it, it makes docking very tricky because... My genius friend didn't put any RCS on the command module, which would have mean I would have had to dock an uncontrollable sticky keys, by the way, an uncontrollable square to a barely controllable rectangle or like command pod with engines. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of all the monoprop in the command module because it's useless and then we'll detach it with the lander and then that'll give us a few extra meters second delta V and then the, I'll also transfer the fuel in the lander to the command module which will give us about 100 extra delta V which is about the margin that the command module had or the lander had left over. So we have about 1320 meters a second with the uh, with the command module and uh, if you were to look up a delta V map or a transfer window planner or a something, uh, it basically tells you that if you're at a jewel orbit, you need 1350 to get out. And I'm, I'm in a Val orbit, so that's another 200 I need to eject from Val. So I have like 250 less than I need. What do we do? 
more gravity assist. This is actually one of the most satisfying gravity assists I've ever got, or just even maneuver in general. So what we're gonna do is kind of do a spiral. So if you see what we're doing now, you can, I don't know, uh, it's going to be a quack, quack. I am a duck. Um, so basically what, hap what we do is we do a spiral maneuver. We go around Tylo, then around Lathe, and then that'll slingshot us out of the Jules system. Uh, I should time warp around it now in a second uh, once I finish this maneuver node and then uh, you guys will be able to see it. It's really satisfying to do. It was like a double gravity assist and then you'll see what orbit it got us into. But unfortunately, since I did have to wait for a Tylo transfer window um, so I could get from Val to Tylo, it means that I missed my transfer window back to Kerbin. Which means even though this, this burn that should have taken me 1500 meters a second of delta V, this entire thing took me only 500 and this the result of this maneuver got me even lower than I needed to be my orbit it was like halfway between even Kerbin and I just needed to get down to Kerbin basically what that means because I take extra time to do this whole thing is I missed my Kerbin transfer window which means we have to wait a very long time to re-encounter Kerbin so spoiler alert I know I said I want to keep the mission quick for the Kerbals it ends up taking about 20 years of them waiting and just going in circles. But efficiency and bad planning on my part. But hey, efficiency. We got we needed we got a Saturn V out to Val and back, and that was pretty neat. And you can see we're doing that kind of spiral maneuver now. And there's a uh, lathe, and then that is going to slingshot us out. And you can see how that orbit got us. Like, you know, if you don't do gravity assists, start doing them. They're pretty neat. And since I didn't want to bore you guys with 15 minutes of time warp, uh, we just time lapsed to our encounter with Kerbin after like a 26 year mission, which is just nuts. And now we can see it, and then the Kerbals can detach the command module with about 700 meters a second of Delta V to spare, which was very good. Very happy, very proud of that on my part. And then we can go ahead and completely kill them with, uh, you know, over G Force them, just completely rip them apart, but that's not important. Kerbals are pretty strong. And then we can go ahead and get the drogue shoot out. And then we'll, once we slow down a little bit more, we'll get the three main parachutes out. And then we can finally come into a landing, come in for a landing, and complete the mission. So that is going to do it for today's video. So I would like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.